Welcome to Value-Based Care, Care Management. This is Lecture B, Care Delivery Challenges and Solutions. This lecture describes challenges to implementing care management and offers a framework for approaching solutions to these challenges in order to more effectively integrate care management practices. The objectives for this lecture are to discuss systems challenges and opportunities for improving care management related to workflows and communication, discuss important patient-related challenges and solutions, discuss how working to the top of your license contributes to effective, efficient team function, describe challenges of care transitions and mitigating interventions, tools, and requirements. As individual providers and healthcare organizations move to delivering value-based care, several difficulties may result. While these challenges may create barriers to effectively implementing care management, there are ways that individuals and healthcare organizations can adapt. This lecture explores the types of barriers individual providers, care teams, and healthcare organizations may encounter. A framework in which these same entities may approach these challenges in order to more effectively integrate care management practices is also discussed. This framework provides ways for healthcare organizations to maximize their investment in health information technology, or health IT, and integrate data and reporting into their workflow processes. By examining these processes, providers can reduce costs by eliminating redundancies and delays and facilitating the transfer of information more effectively. Efforts like these support value-based care and its role in delivering better care and patient experiences. The evolution from a fee-for-service to value-based payment model presents a huge opportunity for healthcare organizations and individual providers. The benefits include incentives for better utilization of resources and rewards for producing better health outcomes. As the evidence has shown, when healthcare organizations adopt effective care coordination and care management practices, they deliver better patient experiences and reduce costs. However, as organizations make these changes, individual providers and care teams may experience significant challenges. This lecture explores the barriers providers and healthcare organizations may encounter as they move to value-based payment models and integrate care management and other strategies consistent with value-based care. Challenges to implementing care management can exist on three levels. First, personal biases and work experiences affect a person's belief about her role in delivering care. These individual biases can create complications with implementing value-based care models. Organizations themselves may experience difficulties with implementing care management practices. These include technology, culture, and care delivery system design. Finally, challenges result from patient-related matters. Language and cultural issues may arise, and social factors may have a significant impact on patients' ability and or willingness to engage in their own health care. Personal beliefs bring challenges because everyone has their own beliefs in the workplace, and these influence how individuals perceive their roles and responsibilities. The foundation for care management is teamwork. One principle of care management is that the leader of the team is not necessarily the doctor. The care team model requires a shift from the traditional physician-in-charge mentality to one where the care manager often leads or facilitates the team. If a physician still thinks of himself as the leader of the team, rather than a member of a care team, the team can't effectively work together. Another challenge is the fear of litigation. An individual may think, if I don't do more, then I'll get sued. I need to do everything that is possible. This kind of thinking persists, even though it isn't supported by evidence. Sometimes individual providers or care teams hoard information, which means that other members of the care team don't have the information needed to provide proper care. Providers may hoard information as a result of an organizational policy designed to retain patients and meet production quotas, or to maintain an intellectual or competitive edge. Another challenge may be that not all individual providers or care team members are familiar with quality improvement processes. They may not have learned how to assess their group performance and how to make improvements inside their healthcare system. Finally, the weariness that results from dealing with constant change can have an impact on the care team. Some individuals may feel that the move to value-based care is just another change that creates a lot of work without yielding results. 
Healthcare organizations can also face challenges with embracing care management. Health IT has been transforming the healthcare environment with the implementation of electronic health record or EHR systems. The integration of EHRs in the U.S. varies by states and regions. Some states or regions have up to 100% integration, while others are well below that level. The fact that an organization implemented an EHR doesn't guarantee that the information contained within one healthcare organization's EHR can be easily accessed by those who need it. This can even be true when different organizations have an EHR from the same vendor, because it doesn't always mean they have the same options or version of the software implemented. This can result in a mismatch in the data fields when attempting to exchange and manage data. Another challenge inside of healthcare establishments involves the interoperability of systems. For example, an organization might have a medication ordering system, a radiology ordering system, a lab ordering system, and a health record system. However, these systems may not even be able to exchange information within the same organization, let alone exchange it between care delivery systems. Having electronic systems in place means there is an unprecedented opportunity to use the data in these systems to improve the quality of care. However, the challenges described here have led to an underdeveloped capacity to get and use this essential data. The culture of an organization has a significant impact on care management. One barrier might be a culture that isn't grounded in team-based care. In such an environment, healthcare professionals may not have experience working as a team, so they haven't learned or practiced some of the necessary skills to effectively leverage team members, communicate regularly, and share information. When communication doesn't flow freely between team members and they are working in silos, it can result in someone missing essential information about a patient. Finally, the way an organization demonstrates how they value safety, teamwork, patient-centeredness, respect, and quality will always have an impact on the success or failure of care management. Finally, the way a care delivery system is designed can also be a challenge to successfully embracing care management. Healthcare systems have complex workflows related to entering information into an EHR, including who enters that information, where it belongs, and who can have access to it. For example, even how test results flow from one department to the next is part of the system design. The routines, both the programming routines that drive the workflow designs and cultural work routines, can make it difficult for a healthcare system to support value-based care and care management. Further, workflow designs are based on the fee-for-service model of healthcare reimbursement. This structural framework creates barriers to moving toward a value-based payment model. A final challenge to workflow design is the number and complexity of the forms required by organizations in order to provide care. Additionally, there are requirements to supply specific information on specific forms that may be duplicative or not consistent with care delivery workflow. Now, let's consider the patient perspectives that impact care management. Language, because it is the basis of all communication, is a fundamental concern to address between patients and providers. Without addressing language, other considerations become more difficult to navigate. Cultural traditions may be tricky to understand and resolve because cultural norms can interfere with our normal healthcare delivery practices. For example, typically we'd talk directly physician to patient. However, in some cultures, the expectation is to talk to an authority figure rather than directly to a patient. Dietary or religious practices also influence care management. For some cultures, food choices can complicate consistency with the plan of care. Taking a medication on a set schedule, for example, may not always be possible within a patient's cultural practices. Other factors influencing care management are the fear and uncertainty that a patient experiences. These arise from two sources, fear and uncertainty about her condition and the outcome, and fear and uncertainty around navigating the healthcare system. For someone who doesn't have a medical degree or insider knowledge of the healthcare system, the information she hears can be difficult to understand. When you add in the patient's own concerns over her condition and outcomes, this increases the scale of this obstacle. 
Finally, social determinants of health are some of the biggest indicators of outcomes. These factors are conditions in the environment in which people are born, live, learn, work, play, worship, and age that affect a wide range of health outcomes and risks. Care management is one of the solutions to helping patients break through these barriers to care. Oftentimes, many or all of these issues combine to provide significant challenges to care management. The patient is the center of the care team. When the patient doesn't fully engage in the relationship with the care team, she may not be contributing to the fullest extent possible toward optimal health outcomes. Engaging the patient as a partner is much more difficult in Medicaid, behavioral health, substance abuse, and geriatrics. When engaging in a care relationship, sometimes the patient has an expectation that they will just be told what to do by the doctor. Instead, to produce better outcomes, the patient needs to learn how to become a partner in their care, to understand both what to do and why so they can make decisions along with their care team. To be fully engaged, patients need access to tools and resources that allow them to participate in their care. However, patients that have limited or no access to technology, and therefore limited or no access to their medical records, may require additional support. For example, if the patient doesn't have a computer or a smartphone, the care team needs to provide the information to the patient in an alternative way, such as face-to-face care planning, motivational interviewing, and providing the patient with information on paper. Sometimes the complexity of a patient's condition proves to be a challenge. For example, a patient with multiple chronic conditions can struggle to manage his care, the cost of his care, and the demands of his daily life. These competing needs can make it difficult for him to seek or even understand the support he needs. A patient in this situation may have to manage one illness at the expense of not fully treating or managing another. Some patients talk with their family or neighbors or consult the Internet and form a predetermined opinion about the right course of action before seeking care. These patients may demand tests or treatments that are simply not appropriate for them. This can present a significant challenge for the healthcare team to assist the patient in understanding the best options for his particular needs or condition. The complexity of the healthcare system may be a challenge for patients to navigate. There can be a lack of communication, cooperation, and continuity between healthcare systems. Patients may expect their providers or care teams to communicate by sharing consultation notes, test results, and other information. However, the complex healthcare system is not always designed to accommodate those expectations for several reasons. First, there is a lack of system integration, not only within the same healthcare system, but between healthcare systems. This makes information exchange difficult. Second, legislative and regulatory restrictions such as HIPAA can make it difficult for healthcare systems to share patient information. When healthcare providers are restricted by regulations that limit the sharing of information, it can make it difficult for patient families, caregivers, and other providers outside their system to get the information that they need. Third, providers or care teams may have a different understanding of the legislative or regulatory restrictions that may or may not allow them to share information to the degree that patients expect. Finally, many health care providers and care teams may not have a broad or shared understanding of value-based care. Often, they may not be informed of health care transformation and alternative payment models. As a result, many of the care providers may be unaware of the requirements and expectations of the required contracts. This lack of knowledge can create resistance to changing to the new value-based care delivery models and the implementation of care management. Now that we have covered most of the challenges healthcare organizations face in care management, let's consider some solutions. Making a concerted effort to implement and use EHRs and other health IT systems is one way to realize the benefits of technology in healthcare systems. There has been a great deal of progress made since 2008 in the adoption of EHRs. For healthcare systems with EHRs, the next area of focus relies on establishing interoperability and the exchange of information between health IT systems. This allows the ordering of medications, lab work, radiology tests, and clinical notes to be integrated into one patient record. Once these integrations are in place, the next area to address becomes the interoperability with other facilities and locations of care delivery that lie outside of the internal healthcare system.
By having information in a single health care record, this information can be made available to providers and patients when, where, and how they need it. To leverage an organization's investment in health IT to support care management, the following list of workflow and system changes are recommended. Use a consistent admission discharge transfer, or ADT form. Use registries. Identify patient panels. Enhance the capacity for report production. Integrate decision support tools. Use evidence-based guidelines and make care plans available. To address challenges that arise due to organizational cultural issues, some organizations have undertaken active culture change initiatives. These organizations have implemented programs that help their employees learn to better function in a care team environment. These initiatives also seek to invite patients to engage in their care so that they are integrated into the care team. Care managers and care teams are using shared decision-making and motivational interviewing techniques as ways to assist patients in creating plans of care that are consistent with the patient's preferences and values. Motivational interviewing is a technique where the care team member engages in a conversation with the patient to find out more detailed information about what is important to that patient and what motivates or drives him. These interviews result in a more detailed picture of how the patient can engage in behaviors that are consistent with achieving their health goals. Organizations have adopted electronic communication strategies, such as texting or secure messaging, as a way to communicate more easily with patients and to improve overall health literacy. Some of these techniques include using text messages that may consist of both words and images to allow the care team to convey information, remind patients of their plan of care, or offer guidance. This also allows the patient to communicate back to his care team. Additionally, many care delivery systems are using patient advisory councils, or PACs. These PACs consist of a diverse group of patients, representative of the organization's population. Care teams can seek advice from the PAC Council about specific issues, such as the challenges of patients not receiving information, or the availability of appointments, or how the workflow or floor plan of a care delivery site could be more patient-friendly or supportive. In these conversations, providers gain insight into questions like, what does our system need to do to meet the patient's preference, values, and to deliver care that supports patient goals? This advice can assist the organization in redesigning care delivery systems, reprioritizing activities, and establishing organizational priorities and strategy. When an individual provider, care team, and or organization is struggling with cultural barriers, developing a culture that supports teamwork can overcome this barrier. When moving to a team-based culture, there are several considerations. The reinforcement and expansion of a culture of safety is a good place to start. A predominant characteristic of effective healthcare organizations is ensuring the safety of patients first and foremost. In care management, the concept of safety expands to encompass the entire care team. This means speaking up, questioning, and taking your role on the care team seriously without feeling threatened. Further, providing training to care team members inside the organization helps them understand their roles on the team and in care management, what other roles may also participate in the care team, and how some of those roles may change as the patient's needs change. Finally, if team members are taking on the role of others within the team by not doing their own job and working to the top of their license, it creates inefficiency, potential duplication of efforts, and communication gaps. Thus, when healthcare professionals work to the top of their license, it ensures the care team is the most effective and efficient it can be for the patient. Breaking down the barriers created by the design of a care delivery system isn't an easy task. It requires both system redesign and change management. It also involves looking for ways to improve quality throughout the system. And then it requires people to do the work necessary to make the changes happen. The task may seem daunting. However, it is not insurmountable. Here are some recommendations for ways in which health organizations can effectively approach system redesign. First, look inside the organization. Identify who is already a champion for change. These will be the people who have a strong drive for improvement and strong change management skills. Next, build an infrastructure inside the organization to facilitate change management and support quality improvement, or QI. 
Clinical settings traditionally follow hierarchical roles essential for licensure and appropriate supervision. However, that doesn't always support effective QI. A paradigm shift may be necessary to overcome these obstacles, and key staff roles to ensure QI measures are met is essential to that process. Formalizing certain roles for team members helps effectively maintain these changes. Common roles on the QI team may be someone who is the daily leader, a person who enters essential data, a provider champion, someone in operations, and a data specialist to analyze data. Once you have a structure in place, take the time to map out process flows that support care management. Examine those processes to identify opportunities for improvement. These opportunities arise in areas of inconsistency, variation, and where new process change is required. For example, creating key documents that are consistent across care teams, and creating a system where care managers can manage across a care delivery system supports efficiency and a focus on the patient. Once these things are in place, a care delivery system can focus on transitioning to alternative, value-based payment models. Addressing the challenges within an organization is part of the solution, but the other part is addressing the difficulties faced by patients. Care management can help patients address some of the challenges they face. Providing access to information enables patient engagement. First, patients can increase their understanding of their condition, so they can be more proactive partners in their health. To facilitate this, organizations have provided materials in multiple languages and made them suitable for various education levels. They have also provided patients with their care plans, including details about what foods they should or shouldn't eat, whether they need to increase their activity levels, timing of their medications, how to decrease levels of stress, and what indicators they need to be aware of that should trigger a visit to their clinic or emergency room. Patients can learn more about their role as the center of the care team by asking questions. Providers can encourage this behavior by being supportive and acknowledging the value of the patient's contributions. Care managers can also educate patients on how to get the most of their visits with their provider. One method is to have them put together a list with all of their issues and questions in order of priority to discuss at their appointment. Patients can also identify a personal support system to enhance their engagement by involving family members, friends, or partners to help them follow through with their care plan. Other solutions include providing access to patient health information via online patient portals. Some facilities provide access to the patient portal at kiosks located inside the healthcare facility for those who do not have access to technology at home. This is also an example of a way to reduce the technology access barrier. Some libraries have begun to offer these kiosks as well, further increasing access. Addressing social determinants of health through care management is likely to include social workers and community organizations. By including these key constituents of the care team, it is possible to remove barriers toward improved health outcomes for patients who face social challenges. Legislative initiatives can also begin to address closing the health gaps faced by some patients. Let's now turn our attention to some of the ways health IT can reduce the complexity of the system and better engage patients. A primary health IT strategy requires organizations to expand access to information and to care. Recommendations for increasing information access include patient portals that allow for scheduling appointments, securely exchanging emails with providers, reviewing test results, and providing care plan information to patients. Patient access also applies to location. Increasingly, patients wish to access care as they do many other services. Alternative hours, location options including urgent care centers or retail clinics, and types of visits including over-the-phone consultations, video consultations, and web-based nursing improve access to care. Applications that electronically integrate care information, care teams, and providers allow better support and provide better care. Additionally, by making it possible to more easily transfer health information between departments, specialties, primary care providers, across the system and between systems, communication and information exchange is enhanced, thus increasing the value to the whole system of care. Operational strategies include telehealth centers for coordinating and managing patient care, changing and expanding patient care hours, using patient navigators, and patient contact centers. 
We've explored many of the challenges patients may encounter when seeking care. We've also discussed ways in which healthcare systems and providers can make changes, be more accommodating to patient needs, and adopt new techniques that engage patients in their care. Before we conclude, let's explore a story that illustrates how patients with complex conditions, their care system, and their care team encountered some of these challenges and found ways to overcome them to achieve desired health outcomes. Indiana implemented a care management program for chronic disease management that included programs for patients with diabetes and or congestive heart failure. This initial program, ICDMP, offered care management to patients on two levels, a call center and nurse care managers. All eligible members were first stratified as either low risk or high risk. The call center assumed responsibility for making the first call to members of both groups to introduce them to the program and assess their general health status. Care coordinators with a customer service background, not clinical, supervised by nurses, staffed the call center. After the first call, high-risk and low-risk members took two different tracks. High-risk members were assigned to nurse care managers who worked with them for four to six months. Low-risk members received calls and educational materials quarterly. After a high-risk member was in care management for four to six months and was ready to self-manage, the nurse care manager transitioned him or her to the call center for quarterly contact. The combination of in-person and phone contact has provided patients with effective care interventions and has produced a cost-saving trend in average total claims for the targeted Medicaid program populations. This concludes Lecture B of Care Management. Throughout this lecture, we've explored the types of challenges that individual providers, care teams, and healthcare organizations experience when adapting to care management in a value-based care setting. We've also described a framework that organizations can adopt to assist with these changes. This framework will not solve all the problems organizations may face. Some organizations struggle to determine where to invest their resources and time in order to have the greatest impact. These organizations also wonder how long it will be before we reach the tipping point that requires a commitment to a total value-based care model. Organizations are not alone in coping with these changes. Individual care providers and the care team often are challenged both personally and professionally to cope with these changes. Providing training and support to individuals and facilitating better communications can overcome these barriers.